Welcome to the arguably easier fight than P5S. Hegemony has a few new tricks up her sleeves and barely resembles the normal mode fight. Before pulling, pick clock spots, recommended to have tanks and healers on cardinals, light party spots, roll party spots, and no into cardinal spots. For that last one, just take your clock spot and go clockwise to the first into cardinal if you're a tank or healer. And before we begin, terminology lesson. For those who may have forgotten due to never using it, a column is a line running up and down, north and south in our case. A row is running left to right, west and east in our use case. First up is Hemetheos' Dark Four. This does lethal raid-wide damage to everyone. Have at least light mitigation to survive any time this comes up. She then brings in a new tank buster, Shellac Synergy. This is an unmarked Kono AoE that the tanks are both expected to share. This is a very good place to use Infones, as it will also apply a bleed to any one hit. Keep both tanks up as she goes into her first major mechanic. Aetheric Polyominoid 1 is simple on its own, but is a good point to describe a pattern of safe spots that will be relevant several times. Two nails will be placed in the arena, one in the north row of squares and one in the south row. These explode into plus sign shapes, bombing the entire row and column they are in. Going west to east will be a 0101 pattern, or alternating safe and unsafe columns. 0101 patterns are common in this fight, so it is good to remember. There will be two safe squares in the middle, east or west, with the opposite side having two on the outer end safe. Which side is further out is random. Just look for the north needle only, and remember the 0101 pattern. Both columns adjacent to the needles column will always be safe within the middle two rows. Go to your light party stacks in these safe spots for a stack on the healers, Unholy Darkness. This is combined with Exocleaver, a pair of alternating AoE cones. East and West are always safe to start, then the second set of AoEs will hit everywhere that was safe. Just dodge into the first AoE to avoid the second. The nails will explode at the same time as the first Exocleaver, so you can also move inward. Pathogenic Cells, commonly called Limit Cut due to A11S and T, is large 90 degree conal AoEs aimed at players, in a random order as dictated by the numbers overhead. Have odd numbers, the blue ones, go north, and even numbers, red, go south. This is a very slow mechanic, with tons of room to do a two-point dodge. That is to say, have the AoEs alternate between being pointed northeast and southeast. When one gets hit by their AoE, they run northwest, and three from northwest will run into the northeast square. During this movement, she will slowly turn and hit two. Two and four will make their swap while she hits three. This really is a slow mechanic with lots of time to get into position, especially if you aim for the middle of the square instead of the outer edge. Aetheric Exchange comes in and is the same as in normal, but with a new additional use. We have Exchange of Agonies, and this is where intercardinal spots come in. There are three debuffs that can be boiled down into two, Flare and Not Flare. If you are a Flare, you want to head out to your intercardinal corner. If you are not Flare, you are direct mid with a Donut AoE or a stack. Who is Who is made complex because of the Aetheric Exchange. Pairs of players will have blue and red arrows tethering them together. This means your buffs are going to be swapped. But this goes back to simple when you remember that buffs are either in or out. DPS will always be tethered to non-DPS, and this mechanic is role-based. All DPS will stack mid, or all non-DPS will stack mid. And so if you have a flare marker and a tether, you are stacking mid. If you have a stack or donut and a tether, you run out. At the same time is Choro Sixo, the same as in normal. However, she will do both AoEs back to back now. If East and West are first, she will immediately use North and South after. If you are in Middle, just stand slightly away from Mid, following the lines that mark square edges. Then dodge into the AoE. If you are outside toward the corners, you just have to eyeball the diagonal, which is easier than it sounds, because these are 90 degree AoEs. It will hit the corners of the arena exactly. So just be very, very slightly to the North or South, of the square's center. 
then swap to the other side while running mid. You may also want to mitigate slightly, as these hurt quite a bit. She will then use Synergy. Synergy is the same as in normal, but now forces a tank swap. Both tanks will be hit with circular AoE busters. They also leave bleeds to keep an eye on. From this point forward, tank busters will be either Synergy or Chelic Synergy. I will simply call it Synergy Busters from this point on, but keep in mind it can be either. React as it comes. Following this up is another Hemetheos' Dark 4. Mitigate and prepare for the return of Transmission. All players will be targeted and get either a Snake, or new to Savage, a Wing. Like in normal, you will want to turn away from the boss as a Snake. You will do a Konal AoE forward. If you have a Wing, you want to look at the boss. You will do the Konal AoE behind you. Who gets what seems completely random, aside from there being four of each. Stay within melee range, but go to your intercardinal spots. There should be two of you there. She will cast Tauros Ixo as the parasites take over. While you and your partner run into position, stand next to each other and adjust slightly across the previously mentioned diagonal line if needed. As your counter hits zero, you will lose control for a tiny moment as you cast your AoE. Move now. Run across the diagonal into the safe spot to dodge the second Choro 6 It is extremely fast, so you don't have time to cast. Just dodge across ASAP. We now have Ethereal Exchange into Polyominoid Sigma, which tethers nails together. There will be two pairs of nails, plus and X tethered together. The starting points for the plus nails will be X when the mechanic goes off. The outer edges are always unsafe for this first pattern, so everyone should stack up mid while reacting to the nails. Only one square of the entire arena will be safe, and which it is will be random. To figure out the safe spot, you only need one of the nails. One nail will be on the edge, but not in the corner. After the swap, this will be an X. Be in the same column as this nail, but two spaces away. You are now in the safe spot. But don't go there. React to where the safe spot is, but stand mid or slightly away from the safe spot. Your party will want to agree on where, but mid is simplest and safest. Hegemony is casting Dark Dome, which places invisible AoE marks on each player's location. Think of the Venom Surge baits from the previous fight, but unmarked. After she casts this, run to the corner of the safe spot, to get away from the placed AoEs. She will move right into Ethereal Exchange and Exchange of Agonies 2. This is once again role based and has us move to our role party spots. We do DPS East and non-DPS West. This time only has 4 debuffs, 2 stacks and 2 flares. The same rules apply. If you have a tether, you are tethered to someone of the opposite group. If you have flare, it will swap to a stack. So flare markers and no debuff stack toward mid, while the stack markers run to the north corners. The debuffs will swap, putting the flares in the corner, and both groups take three-person stacks. During this all, Exocleaver will go out. The outer players can just follow the same plan as they do for Choro 6 The inner players just do a simple dodge. Everyone get mid and prepare for the coming mechanics. We will have a Synergy Buster into Hemetheos' Dark 4 to fill time for the next Ethereal Exchange to come in. Polyominoid Sigma 2 plays by essentially the same rules, but slightly different. Once again, only one nail matters. The outer squares are still also unsafe. Look for the plus nail in the corner. This will become an X and make that entire diagonal unsafe. This one nail shows us both of our safe squares. The intended strat seems to have one light party in each square, but both can fit into opposite corners of one square for Unholy Darkness stacks. Dark Ashes is the same as in normal. It is spread AoEs. Put up some mitigation, then go out here into Cardinal spots and see which Choros Ixo is coming out. As the first one is sent out, the AoEs explode, leaving you lots of room to dodge the second Ixo. Have ranged players go out to their corners to give players toward the mid more room. As long as you ride the diagonal line, the dodge is the same. Heal up before our first and only major mechanic for the entire fight, Kachexia 1. There are a few elements to this, but there's a little leeway. Everyone group up mid and look at your debuffs. 
First, look at the purple person debuff. This will be either 8, 12, 16, or 20 seconds. This is very important for positioning. Then, check if you have a green wing or a purplish red snake debuff. You want to be the opposite side of this icon. If you have a wing, be on her snake side. Wing is west, snake is east. So wing debuff will go east and snake debuff go west. From here, spread out. We go to predetermined spots based on our timers. 20 seconds will go inside of her hitbox, 8 seconds go north, 12 and 16 seconds will go west and east, with 12 seconds favoring more northern positions. Here's a picture for that. These are more general spots, the exact positioning you'll get used to with doing it yourself. As the purple timers run out, you will explode with a giant Aether Necrosis AoE. It does decent damage, but the main issue here is the size. Again, make sure you are spread out. After the 12 second debuff goes off, they can move up toward the 8 second debuff players to give the 16 second players more room. While doing this, she will begin to cast Dual Predation, which will go off four times. This is a slightly smaller AoE around the chosen players. It is based off of proximity and which side you are on. This is why we have the 20 second players standing inside. They will take the first dual predation, then run south for the 20 second Aether Necrosis. As said, there are four dual predations. This is where the timers come in again. The order we take the attacks matters as Aether Necrosis gives a lengthy debuff that means we cannot take dual predation. To get around this, you take the full dual predations in the order of 20, 8, 12, 16. So after the first one goes off and 20 runs south for Aether Necrosis, 8 will go in for their dual predations, then 8 and 12 swap, then 12 and 16. When the fourth predation goes off, everyone run mid and swap sides. Stay mid for healing. When being hit by dual predation, your wing and snake debuffs change to the opposite debuff. She will cast Patera Ixo, cleaving the entire sides of the arena with her wing and snake. Swapping sides means you can live through this, only taking some damage. From here, the rest of the fight is pretty easy. We have a Synergy Buster and Hemetheos' Dark 4 once again for filler. Etheric Polyominoid comes out with two X Needles, turning the safe spots into a checkerboard pattern. There will be eight safe squares in the arena. You can discuss how you wish to spread out, or you can wing it like we do. She will cast Dark Sphere, which are spread AoEs can do off of the relative clock spots, but you will need to shift around quite a bit. There is potential for two players in a single square, so long as both are in opposite corners. During this, she casts Dark Dome. Recall that this was the placed AoEs. The moment the Dark Spheres explode, dodge into any position where nobody was standing. The Dark Dome AoEs are pretty small, so there's a lot of space to dodge. Toward the middle of an X if you were near those. Aetherial Exchange comes with Exchange of Agonies 3, which is just Exchange of Agonies 1 again. I believe this is the opposite of the first one. If DPS were mid the first time, they are out the second. Small sample size though, so I can't be sure. React to it like this was the first one. She immediately leads into Aetherial Exchange and Polyominoid Sigma, comboed into Choros Ixo. There are two possible patterns to this. There will be three needles in a diagonal. On the corners, two plus needles. In the mid will be an X and tethered to one of the needles. The safe spots, let's mentally base off of the tethered plus. If the two needles are close together and the tether is short, the safe spots are two spots away from the plus's starting position. Or to the diagonals of the X if you prefer. If the tether is long, you want to be close to the tethered plus. This will be cut down to one safe spot only though by Turo 6 Stand in the diagonal the needles are in and dodge to the correct safe spot once Turo 6 starts casting. Then dodge again for the second Ixo. We've got another Synergy Buster and Hemetheos' Dark 4 filler. Kachexia 2 is extremely boring and easy. Don't believe me? Remember how many times I said only one needle matters? Well, only one needle matters. There is also a transmission. Take note of your Kachexia debuff immediately and move over to your wing or snake side. 
Then note the wing or snake parasite debuff. That one will be 25 seconds and a shorter timer in case you forgot to look. She will pull out Ethereal Exchange into Polyominoid Sigma. There will be two needles next to each other mid of the same type, X or plus. With a row between them, there will be the opposite type. If X is mid, plus is on the edge. Same columns and right next to each other. An X and a plus will be tethered to each other. The safe spots will be 0101 across both rows and columns for only four safe squares. All you need to know, however, is where there will be a plus in the middle. All other needles do not matter. All you need to know is which needle is a plus after the swap. So in our clear, it was two X's mid with a plus swapping in. Make an X shape around that plus when next attacks go out. Doing so will have all players in safe spots. She will cast Patera Ixo, one player in each group will get a large dark sphere, and Unholy Darkness will be stacked for the other three players. We place the stack marks towards the middle row, with the dark spheres getting the outer safe spots. The people in the stack should also line up next to each other, because remember, there's parasites. Face out or mid depending on your parasite to avoid cleaving other players. Everything goes off at the same time. The AoEs, the Needles, the Patera Ixo, and the Parasites. If you survive, heal up mid and prepare for the boss to give up on killing you. She will do Etheric Polyominoid into Dark Dome. This is basically the same as the first one, but without an exchange. The outside is all unsafe. Stack mid and bait the Dark Dome. Find the needle that is on the outside, but not a corner. Here, it is a plus. Put your back to it and find where the X is. You are now down to one safe spot. Dodge there. Etheric Polyominoid comes in again quick, and it is literally the first pattern, but without any stacks. Find the safe spot in the middle squares and dodge the Choros Ixo. One last Synergy Buster and Hemetheus' Dark 4 for filler, and then she will enrage with a final Hemetheus' Dark 4 cast. Other than Kachexia 1, not much happens here now, does it? Enjoy the clear. This is the theme of the raids, it seems. Rough midpoints. Don't worry, most of the next fight is even easier than this one. And boy do I wish I was joking. Thank you for watching this guide on Abyssos, the Sixth Circle Savage. Like, comment, sub, the good stuff is appreciated. Follow my socials link below, and maybe follow my Patreon for more content like this. Take care and may the power of Anadid Hogs lay waste to your enemies. And an extra special thanks to all my patrons over on Patreon, with an extra special thanks going out to Ashtree Dweller, Eamon Al Khatib, Benjamin Hahn, Benjamin Haynes, Benjamin Rice, Sadia Diosasan, Serix, Ethan Olson, Ethan W, Frazier97, James Hall, JB Hruska, Jericho, Kevin Lowe, Marlon Sebo, Mizella, Nick Griffin, T Rogue, Tim A, and Zero Two. Thanks again. Hope you're enjoying Savage. See if he's a giant tree.